Throughout history, every big idea has faced doubt and criticism before it became a reality. It seems that when someone comes up with something new and groundbreaking, there's a natural reaction for many people to question or even mock it. When cars were first introduced, a lot of people laughed at the idea. They thought, why would we need a machine when we have horses? Some even said that cars were just a passing trend and that they wouldn't last. But pioneers like Henry Ford believed in the potential of cars, and today we can't imagine life without them. Just like with the early cars, many people are questioning the idea of a fully reusable spacecraft designed to carry humans to Mars and beyond. The ambitious timeline and scale of the project have led to criticism, ranging from technical feasibility to financial viability. The main reason SpaceX faced so much criticism was that they chose a different way of doing things, rather than just following what everyone considered normal in the space industry. One of the biggest surprises was their choice of building material. For years, spaceships were mainly made using lightweight metals like aluminum and titanium because they're strong but not too heavy. Later, people started using carbon composites which are even lighter and stronger. So when SpaceX said they were going to use stainless steel for their new spaceship Starship, everyone was shocked and filled with questions. Why would they use something different when there were already proven materials out there? SpaceX's choice to use stainless steel for their Starship wasn't just a random pick. In the world of space travel, the materials you choose can make a huge difference. Materials like aluminum and titanium, commonly used in many rockets and spacecraft, can only handle heat from 300 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit before they begin to melt or break down. On the other hand, stainless steel is a real champ when it comes to handling heat. It can endure scorching temperatures of up to 1600 degrees. This feature is super essential, especially when you think about how hot spaceships get when they re-enter Earth's atmosphere. During this re-entry, the spacecraft gets incredibly hot due to the friction with the Earth's air. Space is tricky. It's both super hot and super cold. Most materials can't handle these wild swings. They either melt under intense heat or become fragile in the freezing cold. But here's where stainless steel shines. Unlike other materials that might crack under the pressure of extreme cold, stainless steel gets even tougher. It's like how some people wear shorts in the winter. Stainless steel just handles the cold better. So when you consider the freezing conditions of space, this choice starts to seem less like a gamble and more like a strategic decision. Now let's talk money. In 2019, Musk shared a little secret about the costs. He revealed that while the widely used carbon fiber cost a whopping $200 for just a kilogram, stainless steel only cost them a mere $3 for the same weight. This sheds light on why NASA's rockets carry such a hefty price tag. But while NASA has access to public funding and taxpayer money, SpaceX operates differently. As a private entity, they have to be more budget conscious, making cost-effective choices to sustain their innovative endeavors. This massive price difference didn't just mean saving a ton of cash. It also meant SpaceX could play around with their designs more freely. With the money saved, they could quickly try out new designs, test them, and make improvements. This approach allowed SpaceX to speed up their spaceship development, making innovations faster than ever before. Many people also questioned SpaceX's engines. Instead of using existing, proven engines, why was SpaceX pouring so much time and money into creating their own engine from scratch? This was a common question. However, their efforts culminated in the creation of the Raptor engine, an achievement that made many sit up and take notice. The Raptor, boasting a high pressure of 350 bars in its combustion chamber, was more than just a new engine. It was top tier. This pressure level matters because the higher it is, the better the rocket performs, making the most of the fuel it uses. Furthermore, the Raptor uses a special process, the full-flow stage combustion cycle. This method had given a tough time to many experts in the past because it's a bit tricky. But when done right, it makes sure every bit of fuel is used to push the rocket, making it super efficient. SpaceX mastering this technique just goes to show how dedicated they are to bringing fresh ideas to the table. Critics also raised eyebrows at the decision to fuel the Raptor with methane. Traditional rocket fuels have varied, with many rockets using kerosene or hydrogen as propellants. These fuels, especially kerosene, have a rich history in space exploration. 
For instance, the Saturn V rocket, which powered the Apollo moon missions, used kerosene in its first stage and hydrogen in its subsequent stages. These fuels were chosen for their energy content and their well-understood behavior. But methane as a rocket fuel was largely uncharted territory. No rocket powered by methane had ever successfully reached orbit before the Starship. So why did SpaceX deviate from the norm? Firstly, methane offers a cleaner burn. Unlike kerosene, which can leave behind soot and other residues, methane combusts cleanly. This means the engine components stay cleaner for longer, potentially increasing their longevity and reducing maintenance requirements. But the decision wasn't just about the present, it was also about the future. Musk has never been shy about his ambitions for Mars. One of the intriguing aspects of methane is that it can, in theory, be manufactured on Mars. The planet has vast reserves of carbon dioxide and water, which, with the right technology, can be converted into methane. This gives the possibility of refueling rockets on Mars for the return journey to Earth, or for traveling deeper into space. SpaceX really showed their determination on April 20th when they first launched the Starship. Sadly, things didn't go as planned. Only four minutes after taking off, the rocket exploded. Some people said, I told you so, thinking SpaceX was aiming too high. But anyone who knows how SpaceX works knows they don't give up easily. After the explosion, SpaceX went straight to work. They found and fixed over 1,000 problems with the Starship. That's serious dedication. Just four months later, they're getting ready to try launching it again. But there's a small roadblock. The FAA, which is like the rulemaker for American skies, hasn't said yes to another launch yet. The good news, the FAA has finished looking at the details from the first Starship test. This means they might be close to making a decision. Given how hard SpaceX has been working, many are hoping the FAA will give the green light soon. That's all for today's video, folks. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe button for more similar content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.